be the same. We don't know. What about the next stage? I'm going to write something out here called polynomial space. That means you use a polynomial amount of space on the tape. That means just a polynomial number of, of symbols, not a polynomial number of steps. Why does this include this? Why is this out here? Why does polynomial space include polynomial time? Why does anything that takes polynomial time definitely take polynomial space? But why there are some things in polynomial space that might not take polynomial time? Why are these harder problems, intuitively or rigorously? Explain that. It takes at least one step to generate a symbol on the tape. So. OK. So something that takes, say, uses 30 symbols on the tape has certainly have to use at least 30 steps. Because to get to every cell requires a step. It's possible, if you're only using 30 steps, to reuse them many, 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 many times and use lots and lots of time. How much time? If you have 30 cells, how much time? Seems infinite, seems unbounded. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. But certainly, if you have something that uses only 30 steps, it's got to use at least 30 symbols. If you have something that uses 30 symbols, it might use a lot more than 30 steps. Questions about that? So that implies this relationship. The fact that NP is in between these two, that's still a mystery. And we'll, we'll be going through that at a different time. But it really is. It turns out that polynomial space is enough to do non-deterministic polynomial time. That it really is in this order. Nobody has any idea whether these things are properly enclosed. Nobody knows whether these two are different or not. For all we know, there are things in polynomial space. And every one of them can be done in polynomial time. Now, you know there are things in here that are called NP-complete. So that if they ended up in here, the whole NP would end up in here. There are things called P-space-complete. Problems out here that if they ever ended up in here, all of P-space would end up in here. And we have those problems because we have no way to distinguish between these two classes in any other way. We don't know if they're really different or not. But intuitively, these things are harder than these things, and these things are harder than these things. What kind of problems end up here? Problems end up in here that are p-space complete, which you can't even figure out a way to do in non-deterministic polynomial time. There are problems which you, it seems like you can do almost everything in non-deterministic polynomial time. I mean, you get everything for free. Three satisfiability, just guess the satisfiable formula, that's for free, and then check it in polynomial time. What can't you do in non-deterministic polynomial time? What might be stuck outside in this never-never land of p-space? Well, there's a whole host of problems that are all similar. And I'll give you like a classic example. It's basically any two-person game. And there's a really, really famous one that you've played when you were children, or probably did. And it can be described on a graph, but I'll just describe it to you like you played it when you were children. And then I'll talk about what this problem really is and try to give you a sense that it's not able to be done easily in non-deterministic polynomial time. And as far as anybody knows, there's no way to do it here. But nobody's been able to really prove that there's no way. Here's the game. You and your friends sit there, and you come up with geographical locations. And you take turns. So I start with New York. And then Chris has to come up with a geographical location that starts with a K. Kathmandu. Kathmandu. Most people say Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Kathmandu. So I say Uruguay. Your turn, Chris Walker. Yemen. Yemen. I'm stuck. <laughs> All right. The, so you play this game until somebody gets stuck. Now, in the car, this is just a game to make sure the kids don't drive the parents completely batty on long car trips. And it's usually a game to see who knows the most places or who can just make them up in a clever way. <laughs> right? So I would just stick north and south prefixes to many places, whether they have them or not. And you can go a long way with N's and S's. In any case, Especially if you live in New Jersey, because anyway, it, so you cheat your kids. I, well, I don't cheat anymore. I used to cheat when I was a kid. The real way to play this game is that everybody gets a book with all the places in them. So it's not a question of who knows more places. The real way to play this game is everybody's got the book, 
And when it's your turn, just go ahead and look up something that starts with that letter and yell it. And then everybody's got to cross it out. You can't use the same thing more than once. Everyone understand? That's the real way to play the game. And the question is, given a book of names, who wins the game? The person who goes first or the person who goes second? Everyone understand the question? That's, that's the real way to play. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to define the game for real. I guess it's the completely unreal way to play. So here's what it looks like. It looks like a directed graph. If this is Kentucky, then there would be an arrow to Yemen. Okay, there would also be an arrow to uh, Ypsilanti, yes. And there would be an arrow from Ypsilanti to Indiana. So you just make a directed graph. And you play a game on this directed graph. We take turns. I start anywhere I want, and I X out the thing I started. Now you can move to anywhere that the arrow points to, and you X out what you want. The first person to reach a dead end loses. This is a graph problem. It's not really a problem about remembering names. It's just a problem on a graph. And it's a really simple problem. Okay, You just move it along, and the first person that you can get into a dead end loses. And you're wondering, who wins that game? Your graph, though, would have repeated names in it that would all have to be crossed out. No, because once you cross the no, no, no. Every geographic location has one node. There's all sorts of words that end in the same letter, so couldn't the next one after that, after any of those? So like if this is Kentucky, and this is Yemen, and this is Ypsilanti, and this is Indiana, you might go back here. There might be lots of ones that end in K. But if you're at this and the only place back is to x values, then you lose. Nobody knows any way to solve this problem with a non-deterministic polynomial time algorithm. Let's try. How would you solve this with a non-deterministic polynomial time algorithm? You've got polynomial time on your side, and you can guess to your heart's content for free, as long as you combine them with ors. Well, here's one way. What if I just guess a sequence of moves? <laughs> that end up with me winning, the first person winning. I go here, I guess my opponent goes here, I guess I go here, I guess I go here, and I check and I find out that that sequence of moves is a win for me. Does that mean I've convinced you that I win the game? Right, and my moves, it's OK, because my moves I can combine with ors. You know, either I do this, or I do this, or I do this. And I can check all those ors in parallel for free with non-determinism. But every other move is my opponent. And I don't win just if he moves here, or he moves here, or he moves here, or he moves here. I have to check the and conjunction of all those things. I have to check whether my opponent moves here, and he moves here, and he moves here. No matter which way he moves, there's got to be a way for me to continue. It's there exists a move for me, such that for all moves for my opponent. There exists a move for me, such that for all moves for my opponent. It's a alternating quantifying from there exists to for all, just like you did with a minimax that we did in the algorithms course. And the only way to really check this is to check a whole tree that looks like this. I guess my move, and then I've got to check all my opponent's move. For each of those, I guess my move. I can cut off the branches when it's my turn, but when it's my opponent's turn, I've got to actually try the branches. So the non-determinism helps me cut off branches when it's my turn, but doesn't help me cut off branches when it's my opponent's turn. So I get a big fat tree that expands exponentially. If there's n values in this game, then there's going to be 2 to the n things in this tree. And I don't get polynomial time. So non-determinism and polynomial time isn't enough to do this. How do you do it in polynomial space? There should be a way to do it in polynomial space. It doesn't matter how much time you take, as long as you have polynomial space. Well, there's worst case, there are n nodes. No, there's, there could be the two to the n nodes in the tree. Well, no, for the number of, uh, of cities. Right. There's n cities. Sure. In worst case, each city connects to all the other cities. Sure. So. So how do I go ahead and check this big tree of possibilities without storing more than just that many cities? Basically, what I want to do is kind of do a traversal through this tree, doing an and-or 
connectivity without ever storing the whole tree. Storing the whole tree is too big. 